Hi everyone, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, on Instagram, on Pinterest, Twitter, uh, YouTube, and a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, I'm really excited uh, to be back this week to share another Musical Mondays video and um, I'm doing things a little differently. Um, this week my plan is to try and jump back into the lessons. This week nine and trying to jump in the lessons from the last eight weeks and sort of cover some of the things that I've had to sort of quickly jump through and be like, here's how, here, you know, here's this thing that I've done. And instead of uh, giving you like a rundown of a lot of stuff, I'm going to try and give a little bit more in depth about, well, a lot of stuff. So <laughs> I better get going. Um, but the plan is to talk about some of those lessons I wasn't really able to talk about um, before. And I'm hoping y'all can hear me on Facebook because this mic has been a little fussy. So if you can't hear me, please let me know. <laughs> I guess if you can't hear me, you can't let me know. But anyway, <laughs> um, so uh, uh, hopefully it works. Who, who knows? Um, so anyway, my plan is to go back and talk about some of those things that I haven't been able to spend as much time on in the last couple weeks. So I really want to get into that and get going. So a quick um, update about stuff. If you hear me talk about a video or a book or a puppet or something um, that I love or whatever that I've, that I've talked about in the video, I have a whole page on my blog dedicated to like the links and the stuff. Um, that um, I talk about in the videos. So you can find that if you go to makemomentsmatter.org, you click the video tab and find the Musical Mondays Recap 2021-2022 tab, or at the bottom of whatever video you're watching or podcast you're listening to, at the bottom of the caption, there should be a direct link to that links page. Hopefully. If not, send me an email. Um, okay, and one more thing, if you want to continue on and have a um, more of this conversation after the video ends or after you've stopped listening. Um, I have a Facebook group that I started a couple years ago called Every Moment Matters, a music education community. And in that group, um, we talk about uh, lesson plans, lesson ideas, uh, how to modify things, things that have worked well, things that we could change. So um, I hope that you'll go there and join if you're part of Facebook. It'd be, um, it's just fun to have a community of people that you can you know, talk through and chat about and say like, how do you do this? How would you change this? Is this working for you? Um, and that it, it's been fun to, to have those conversations. Okay. So I'll also say now, um, if you have questions or thoughts or anything along the way, or you're like, Ooh, you, you know, a couple weeks ago talked about X, Y, Z, I tried it. Here's my question. Or if you have any, you know, th anything along the way, please shout out a question in the comments. Um, I'll try and, um, catch that if you're watching live and try and respond to that. Um, and, or, or at least talk about it later on. Uh, there are a lot of things that I want to make sure I talk about, but if there's something specific you're like, you know, a couple weeks ago you talked about X, Y, Z, can you talk about that again? Um, I'd be happy to do that. Um, or just have any other sort of random questions you think I might have an idea. Throw that in there too, who knows? <laughs> but anyway, all that to say, um, I'm going to start uh, crawling through the things that I want to make sure I talk about, but if you have questions or things along the way, please shout those out. I'd love to try and answer those as we go. Okay. So first thing I want to talk about is bulletin boards. It's time for me to change my bulletin board. Um, and I'm really, I, I really like bulletin boards. <laughs> I know some people like just hate them. It's the bane of their existence, but I think bulletin boards are fun because um, you can, you, they can get kids excited about things. You can use them to deliver content. You know, bulletin boards I think are our best advocate because they're there even when we aren't. So if, you know, like there's a, basketball game in the school or a church runs out your school or it's just after hours or parent teacher conference or maybe it's during the school day and a parent just walks by you know maybe they can't stick their head in and talk to you maybe they can't see their kid in music class but the bulletin board is there to sort of advertise for what you do in your classroom and to um, give parents a view into the things that you do it, it really is a, a great opportunity and um, so I, I've been trying to um, advocate through all my bulletin boards. Like the one I've had up is one that's um, sort of an ICANN bulletin board. It's called um, In Music Class We dot dot dot. And then it has like all these different statements of the things that, that people do in music class. Um, and so I that's one that's been super, super popular with um, my parents. They've talked about it. They've talked to me about it. My kids have talked about it. My kids have pointed about it. It's been super fun. And so when I'm going to change it, um, I want to keep it curricular. I want to keep it um, exciting. I want to keep kids talking. And so um, last year, maybe t two years ago, last year, two years ago, 
three years ago? I don't know, <laughs> a while ago. Um, I made this bulletin board that I called like the rhythms of fall or the rhythms of life or whatever. Um, and it, it has all of these words. Um, and so it has like a word and a picture and then it'll, it has the rhythm. So like apple pie has like a ta di ta or a do day do or a t t ta or whatever rhythm syllable system you use. Um, let's see, we've got some other things here. We've got um, apple cider, ta di ta di. We've got, um, let's see, falling leaves, ta di ta. We've got turkey dinner, ta di ta di. That would be a good one for like Thanksgiving. Changing colors, it's another fun one. Pie, pumpkin pie, big supper, friends and family. This is one that's like really great for fall slash specifically Thanksgiving, you know, it can be. Um, but it can also, and it has things like apple picking. Well, guess what? A lot of families at my school are doing that right now. So it's a, it's a fun one to put up there. Um, I see uh, Brielle says, hi from Melbourne. Uh, uh, if you're in Melbourne, I know that you're not probably celebrating fall right now, but <laughs> sorry, you can think about this one for later. Um, anyway, so it's, it's fun to have that up there because one, it like ties in with it's fall and we're putting up, you know, fall theme stuff and it's all the right colors for that, right? Like it's all the, like the fall colors and the fall themes and the whatever. So kids like that, but also, um, it reinforces like words, finding rhythm in words, uh, making connections with that. It helps kids start thinking about other fall words that maybe are also, that also have rhythms or how they would say them or how they might speak them or read them. And so that's fun to do um, and to sort of get kids thinking about rhythms um, while they're also thinking about like seasonal words. And so then having this out in the hallway means that then I can have lots of conversations in my classroom about um, other words in the fall or like how you find the rhythm of words or, you know, all sorts of fun conversations like that. Um, and so that's a really fun one to put up. But if you want that same sort of idea but don't want to do a fall theme, I have other themes too. So I've also in the past, I put this one up. It's rhythms of the sea or sounds of the sea. I forget what I called it. Um, dolphin, uh, squid, pink starfish, lots of bubbles, penguin. So it's got all these rhythm words that are all like ocean themed. Um, that's when I, I put that one up when I have like an ocean themed concert. It's really fun to have out in the hallway when I'm doing that. Um, one more if you're... Again, you're like, I, I like that idea, but what else have you got? And I've also got like a, a theme that's like um, farm words. There's one that's like animal zoo words. There, there's a whole bunch of different options. Um, this one is also fun. It's like sounds of the season. So it's got Kwanzaa, decorations, hot cocoa, candy cane, reindeer so i mean it's like got all these foods that are not foods all these different um words that are like holiday or winter holiday or whatever themed there's like kwanzaa and hanukkah and las posadas and christmas all in here let me see if i can find another example in here because i just showed oh yeah las posadas um coal that's a good one but this is another one where it's just like it can get kids thinking about um, different words that come up and then like what the rhythms of those words are, how you'd maybe string them together, what you could do with that. So it gives kids lots of um, options. And, and this set also comes with, I think all these sets actually come along with um, another way to sort of like talk to administrators or parents a little thing it says all words have rhythm if you take the time to think about it everything around us can be musical and full of life here are some words and rhythms of winter holidays can you think of any other great winter words to add so it's like a little chat you know like a a chat page where like the, the parents can sort of understand the point of the bulletin board they can make the connection administrators like it because it sort of like explains why that's there and what it is um, so again all these things are like just so like in your through your bulletin board, you can use that to help, you know, build curricular connections, to get kids excited about music. Like it's, it's just a great opportunity and it's, it, it, you know, it doesn't take a lot of time. You print it out and you laminate it if you want, and then it's up there and it's there advocating for you all the time. So I, I do like one or two new bulletin boards, um, a season or so, and I'll print them out, I'll laminate them, whatever. And then I save them away. And then like, you know, in a year or two, I'll bring it back out again. Um, so like the sounds of the season I did not use last year, so I might put that up. 
um, or you know other stuff just so that I have more variety so kids aren't seeing the same thing every year but also so that I'm still able to reuse those things anyway Rhythm bulletin boards on my links page if you want. I have a link for like all the rhythm bulletin boards that I've done if you're interested in those. Um, and like I said, there's like a fall theme, there's like a, um, a farm theme, a jungle theme, uh, an ocean theme, a space theme, different options if you're interested. Okay, I've also had a bunch of people since in the last few weeks I've said like, I'm introducing the half note using the note neighborhood. I've used blah, blah, blah using the note neighborhood. I wanted to share just a little bit more about that because some people are like, I don't know what that is. And I've talked about it a lot. So I thought I would just share sort of an overview of each of those characters and like how I use them. Um, Sarah just asked, is it on Teachers Pay Teachers? Yes. And there's on the links page, there's a link to all of those rhythm bulletin boards um, if you're interested. Okay, so I want to show you the note neighborhood stuff that I'm using and sort of like how I'm using it. So let me see if I can pull this up. I've gotten better with the technology about like being able to show it to folks. So let me see if I can do that. First, I have to change Instagram and I've got to move Instagram around. Sorry, Instagram. Let's see if this works. It sort of worked last time. Hey, there it is. Okay. So, okay, let me try and do this a little bigger. Um, see how, how good I'm getting with technology? Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so um, let me switch this over here too. So the Note Neighborhood is this like sort of silly story that I came up with years and years ago. Um, it's this, um, uh oh, well, let's change this. Sorry, Facebook. I changed something over there and it sort of worked. Okay. Uh, there we go. Sorry, Facebook. I'm back on it. Okay. So it's a sort of silly story that I came up years and years ago, and it's just a way to sort of um, uh, like reinforce with kids how note values work. Um, if you're familiar with like um, Kodai at all and how Kodai explains concepts or how they use um, like a process to teach a concept, they always talk about like prepare, present, practice, where if you're teaching like 16th notes or you're teaching a half note or something, you always try and prepare that by like singing songs and playing games where that note value is present and then you get it into kids heads you get them to try it it's always um, sound before sight like they're always they're trying it they're feeling it they're playing it they're patting it they're doing whatever and then eventually um, you name what that is that in the present stage and that's sort of where the note neighborhood comes in so my students we play a lot of games we sing a lot of songs that include 16th notes or half notes or a quarter rest or whatever and then um, the note neighborhood sort of helps to name what that thing is and also gives it a story so for example um, you know, he says like, hi there, I'm Tommy, but all my friends call me Ta. This is my house and it's not too crazy around here. We don't, uh, I don't need to rush. You know, it, like it goes through and tells a story. So like with my students, what I do is I say, I know you're great readers. That's what, amazing readers, but let me just read these for you so that we're not, you know, trying to rush through. Let me just try and read it for you. Cause there are some kids who are going to just jump in and try and read everything. And that's fine. But I, I always want to like say like, here, let me just read this for you. Um, so I read through this story. So like this is, this one, um, this set is called like Meet the Neighbors and it has multiple neighbors, but I have like a full PowerPoint for like just half note or just 16th notes or just quarter note or whatever to help sort of give kids an understanding of what those things are. And it just basically goes through and explains like how the note works. They get to practice reading it. Um, and so what I'm doing is like, I'm using my little laser pointer. I'm using my finger to help them track along from left to right. And we just like get that process of how to read it. And then, you know, then it comes out and says like, well, you, you can call me Ta, but just know that some people call me by another name. They call me a quarter note. That's my special vocabulary name. And at that point we like point it out on the bulletin board or on the word wall or whatever, and sort of identify it, see where it is. Um, and then usually after we learn that, then we go and, and, you know, read different examples. We try it out. Quarter notes, a bad example for that because it's, you know, if you have a line of just quarter notes, well, that's, there's only like one option. There's no variation there. Um, but once they've learned eighth notes as well, then you can let, you know, ta's and toddies or do's and due days or whatever it is you say um, at your school. But they can go through and then once they've learned that, then you can um, practice. So like there's the prepare, which is getting into their head before you ever name it. Then you name it in the present and then you get a practice. That's sort of the Kodai way of, um, of shaping how you teach a concept. And so Note Neighborhood fits right in there in the pre present. It sort of um, lets kids meet those different things. So like here they're meeting Dion and Dion is, um, 
Ta's best friend and they high five all the time. And so then they, you know, they do their jump five, Ta di, and then they, um, we do it in patterns, right? So like every note neighbor has that same thing where it's like, you introduce who they are, you try them in patterns, you try a different version, you try a different version, you try a different version, and then you label what that thing is with its like vocabulary name, and then you move on, right? And so I have that for, um, well, quarter note, eighth notes, quarter rest. Um, they are about to meet the sassy half note, but then they run off um, and they get to meet the quarter rest uh, because he's hiding from the half note. He doesn't want her to know who he is. Um, so there's, <laughs> that's how the quarter note, uh, they meet the quarter note. They go and they try that out. They read it, they label it. I'm jumping ahead here because I don't want to spend my whole time talking about note neighborhood. Um, and right, and then they label it, they talk about the vocabulary word, um, and then, you know, then they meet half note. So this is sort of a progression of how um, I do all of this. And she's real sassy. She snaps her fingers and waves her arm around, and that's how, you know, that's that wave of the two beats of snapping and waving is how they get the half note. Um, and it talks about how, like, her house is so big it sits on two lots. So there's a lot, there's a lot of, like, explanation of, like, getting the kids to sort of understand how the notes work together and, like, um, the relationships between them. And, and this is, again, I, I found that, like, just giving kids a narrative really sort of helps them understand. Even if it's a narrative, like, giving it a character helps them understand, like, a whole and it sort of helps them rem remember like, oh, this gets two beats. And so that's sort of like how I, I introduce, um, when I'm introducing the notes. And, and you know, then from Note Neighborhood, like we practice it, but then also you can just jump to anything. You can do um, any sort of note reading and kids will remember the story of the sassy half note. They'll remember the story of, let me jump ahead here, um, to King Hole Note. You know, they'll remember all of that and that helps them sort of remember how um, the notes work together and their different note values and how and how everything sort of fits together. So that's that's like a, the world's quickest, briefest overview about Note Neighborhood. And let me show you um, those, those resources, how do they work. So um, in each little Note Neighborhood thing, you can see there's like a scope and sequence. Let me change this over here on Facebook. There's a scope and sequence. So like, The introduction is where they actually learn and understand what that thing is. And then the practice one, it's like they go out on the trampoline and they jump around and they read rhythms together. And then quarter rest, you know, like they introduce um, the, his disguise and how he does it. And then they go to the park and they practice reading. So it's like two separate PowerPoints um, for, for that concept. And then you can, you know, use the name, the, the quarter note, or the, the ta, or whatever, the sassy half note, you can use that as you go on, go forward. So for each thing, there's like the introduction and then the practice, the introduction, the practice. And I use each of these introduction PowerPoints um, just to, um, I use these introduction PowerPoints just to sort of help kids understand um, like how, how the note value works. And then from there, I just use, you know, the, the, I'm not explaining this well. Uh, I use it to uh, explain how it works, and then I just use that terminology from then on, like the sassy half note or king hole note or whatever, to help kids sort of understand um, the concept and, and the connections. So this this like scope and sequence that I'm flipping through right now, this is in like every note neighborhood thing. One of um, the things, if you want to get a little bit more, is that if you go to um, my teachers teachers page and you go to whoops, um, you go to the note neighborhood stuff. Um, the first one is uh, free, the quarter notes and quarter rest. So if you want to like download it and try it and see what it's like, um, you can get that. It's free and you can like see how it clicks through and like how all of that, um, how all of the, the stories sort of work, I guess. So you can sort of see how that might work in your classroom. I hope this sort of gives you just an idea of how I fit that in. It's usually like at the end of a lesson, like we'll do something active for the first 15 minutes and then the last 10 or 15 minutes we'll like read a note neighborhood story they'll learn a concept, we'll practice it or whatever. At the end of every, um, every sh show, every PowerPoint, there's like a, a practice page where you can see the note neighborhoods, neighbors like not in their costumes, not with like the hat or the glasses or whatever, just regular standard notation you could read through. And that's sort of how I, I use the PowerPoints in my lessons. It's not its own thing for the whole day. It's like at the end of the day and then we use it. And then we, the next time they come back, we might do the practice PowerPoint or we might just like remember how the stuff works and sort of use that to explain the note value. Hope that helps. Okay. <laughs>
Um, cool. I'm just looking through comments here to make sure that I get everything. Um, okay, cool. So if you have any questions about that or anything as we go on, please shout those, shout those out in the comments because I'd love to um, try and answer them if I can. Okay, next up, Old Lady Who Swallowed a Fly. I know I talked about there are other books out there, and like I said, I've already put on the links page there are tons of other Old Lady Who Swallowed a whatever books. I have a couple more I wanted to show you. So I think the one that people are most familiar with is this one. This is because it's like the Scholastic. It's everywhere. Um, this is by uh, Lucille Calandro. At least this one is. Yes. And illustrated by Jared Lee. So like Old Lady Who Swallowed a Rose, Valentine's Day. Old Lady Who Swallowed a Cow. Well, that's just like farm, I guess. And then there's like Old Lady Who Swallowed, um, Old Lady Who Swallowed a Bat, Old Lady Who Swallowed a Bell, Old Lady Who Swallowed whatever. There are like a thousand of these books um, by this same author. And so you, these are fun to put in. Um, these They're fun to put in uh, like a sub tub if, you, if you've already taught the song and you want them to sort of get like another um, taste of it, another try at it. Um, there are tons of fun Old Lady Who Swallowed whatever books and I have a whole list on Amazon of like those if you're interested. Here's another one sort of more unique. Um, there was a bold lady who wanted a star. Super fun one. This is by um, Cherise Merciel Harper and I'm pretty sure I put this one on the Amazon page but it goes there was a bold lady who wanted a star. I don't know why she wanted a star. It seemed too far. There was a bold lady who bought some shoes she ran for miles and then stopped for a snooze. She bought the shoes to catch the star. I don't know why she wanted a star. It seemed too far. There was a bold lady who bought some skates. She slid and she slipped down hills and through gates. She bought the skates to replace the shoes. She bought the shoes to catch the star. I don't know why she wanted a star. Then she buys a bike. She's like trying to go catch the star. She buys a car. It gets progressively you know, more intense with more things. Then she buys a plane and then finally ends up with her buying a rocket. Um, and she, she buys that and then goes to, she zoomed up and caught the star in her pocket and she rode it back. She rode the rocket to the plane. She rode the plane to the car. She rode the car to the bike, the bike to the skates, the skates to the shoes. Um, and then she finally makes it back and she puts the star in a jar. Cute little book, another fun variation. The last one that I'm sure many, 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 many of you know about um, is this one called I Know a Shy Fellow Who Swallowed a Cello. There are so many cool resources that go with this one. Um, this one you can find, there's a reading rainbow version of it being read. There are a ton of other read alouds on YouTube. Um, it's scholastic, it's old, so you can probably find it used. It might already be in your library or in a you know, half price books or whatever. It's a, it's just a fun one where he keeps swallowing instruments. Um, and then obviously has a problem at the end and spits them all out. Right. Um, a super cute little book. If you don't know this one, it's delightful and you can easily throw this in a sub tub with, um, you know, like any sort of worksheets about, uh, Instrument coloring, I I'm need to have a sub in the next week or two, and I'm going to put this one for my younger kids, um, specifically first grade, because we just did Old Lady Who Swallowed a Fly with, like, the, the puppet that eats all the things. Um, and, and then they can have, like, coloring sheets with instruments. Um, some of those a couple years ago that, like, have the instrument, the name, and what it does. So it's, it's a fun way for them to, like, get the content, do something a little bit more active, but not so crazy. Like subs like coloring sheets because they're like, hey, I know how to do that. <laughs> Even if they're like, I'm not a music person, but I know how to, you know, so it's it's fun to be able to add that. Um, so tons and tons and tons of little old lady books. Just keep collecting them and putting them in your sub tub or putting them in your resource pile or put them in your, you know, on your shelf. They're, they're, you're able to use them all year long. I introduced the song early on in first grade and then throughout the year, if I need it for subs, if I need it for last two minutes of class or whatever, I can pull out any number of these books and they're, they're fun to add in. Okay. Um, Kelsey says, have you seen these puppets for little old lady? Yeah. I, Oh, I haven't seen that your Etsy listing. I'll have to check that out. It's like sort of creepy stuff. Little old lady. It's not really a puppet, but like you can put, you could, she eats stuff and it's, it's fun to have. Okay. <laughs> um, I wanted to throw that out there because I know that I'd already talked about like there are other books, but I'd not really talked too much about many of them. So I wanted to throw, um, throw those out there. Another book that I talked really quickly about um, in the last 
I think last week was this book by Violet Duncan called Let's Hoop Dance. Um, Violet Duncan has three really great books. I have all of them. Um, you can, I don't think that she's on Amazon, but you can find her on our website, which is, I think it's violetduncan.com. I think I put it on the links page, but now I'm blanking because I was, you know, 20 minutes ago. I can't remember. Uh, yeah, violetduncan.com. So in this book, it talks about Native American hoop dance. It talks about like, well, like the father in the story, Tony is teaching his son, Naichi, like how to, how to hoop dance, why they hoop dance, what they do. One of my favorite things about it, and I shared this last week was... Um, you know, they go through and it's these really just adorable pictures of father and son learning how to do this. Um, and Naichi takes his hoops everywhere. He's so proud. He's so excited about it. Um, and it shows him how to do the hoop dance. Ooh, let me get to the page I wanted to show you. Yeah, so like how, how to hold it, how to use it, um, how to hop through it. Um, what do you do to make shapes? What kind of shapes can you make? Um, talking about like, ooh, this one looks like it could be like a caterpillar. This one looks like the sun. Um, ooh, this one looks like the wings of an eagle. So when I use this book, how do I use it? Well, I read through the book. Um, it's It's got these really great pictures that kids love to see um, and love to you know, make this connection with like, uh, my, especially show this to like my kindergartners because he looks like he could be kindergarten or first grade. So like they super connect to that. Um, so, cause there's a kid who looks, you know, like their age and they're excited about it. So I love to read this. And then I show, um, a video of Tony Duncan doing hoop dance. He's like an international winner for uh, hoop dance competitions. So there are a couple really cool videos. I put one out there like a year ago when I first read this book, I shared it on my links page of like, wow, it's him at a competition. It's so cool. And then in 2021, he did a special video that is like just him in front of this like beautiful, beautiful canyon or vista. I can't, I don't know exactly where it is. And it's like just him doing his in front of this like absolutely gorgeous background. <laughs> and so I was like, why have I been showing kids this other video? I'm going to show them this one instead. So um, I put that link on the links page because I just found it um, today. But I, I show them that because like we read the book and understand like how the hoop dance works. Why do they learn it? Well, all of that. And like, how does that happen? And then we watch it actually happen. And as I'm going through, I don't just like sit back and check my email when the video is going. I'm like, ooh, remember that's what they said. That's like, ooh, they're doing that. That's like the sun. Remember they said this is supposed to look like the sun. Okay. And here, yeah, this is where he's supposed to look like he's like, he's got an eagle with eagle wings. Okay. And then this, you know, it's so like, as it's happening, I don't just let it go. Like, and then kids start saying like, ooh, yeah, I think I see the wings or like oh yeah that one does look like he's riding a horse or it looks like whatever and so they sort of start to make those connections i you know i think maybe one of the know better i would be like well then let's pull out some hoops and let's try it ourselves but i think you know that's not the right way to go after this because hoop dance is a special tradition it's taught you know from person to person it's uh, really important in the actual culture in the native american culture that that carries this tradition on so like that's not my story that's not my culture i'm not going to try and be like well you know what let's do our own middle of kansas version of this i i don't really think that's for me and so instead what i do is i some of the ideas and i say like wow i love that they took those hoops and they made them into something else look i wonder what we could do um can we try and make you know like pretend and like make something like we have turn into something else so maybe i would hand out rhythm sticks maybe i'd hand out like an, an egg shaker maybe we would hold on to like hand drums maybe we would get um ribbon wands something else and then we take that idea of like using those hoops or using those things and cre creating something else using our imagination using our uh, creative skills to come up with something else, that's sort of where we take it. Because that's something we're gonna be doing in class anyway. And so being able to highlight this culture and like see an amazing example of how that happens. In the video, he has like 10 hoops going at a time. He's like doing these super complex patterns. Kids are get like so inspired, right? But like, I'm not gonna be like, well, let me teach you the actual hoop dance. Cause like, that's, I don't, I don't know it. It's not my dance. It's not my, um, it's not my story. So instead I can say, let's take this cool idea of like how they're trying to represent with the hoops or with their dance. Let's take that and use that idea. And so uh, that's sort of how we do. That's how, that's what I add on to the lesson after we've read the book, after we watch the video of Tony Duncan performing. Um, 
uh, you know, then then we take that and we say like, we are inspired, here's what we're gonna do. And then it can also turn into instrument exploration, it can turn into uh, movement exploration, it can turn into, I mean, anything you really want. And it's a super cool book. Um, it's Violet Duncan is an author um, with a small publishing house, totally worth going out and supporting her. Um, and her stories are so great. The, the other one I would recommend if you get, she has three books out there now. They're all good, but I would say if you're going to get any other book other than Let's Hoop Dance, I would say get I Am Native because it's this great story where it's a great book where it shows like traditional native uh, culture versus uh, contemporary, um, contemporary native culture. So like um, I can play an instrument that shows like playing Native American flutes versus like playing a violin or something like I take violin lessons and then like uh, traditional Native American dances you might see at like a powwow or something and then like um, ballet dance so like how you could see like the juxtaposition of like traditional versus contemporary it's just again real picture super cool so well explained um, and hundreds of years ago and that's all you know kids I feel like sometimes all they get but like, part of our history but they are still a part of the present and here are these great ways you can see their cultures represented here's a way you can see them taking their culture and pushing it forward and you know it, it it's just a great way that book is a great way to sort of um, explain more of that and help kids understand so Let's Hoop Dance is a great book, um, and you should also go check out Violet Duncan's other books. They're delightful. Okay. All right, so let's talk about um, Omochio. So a couple of weeks ago I shared about uh, this poem I do, or this poem I learned, not that I do, I did not come up with it, um, but it's a poem from um, Japan. It's like a hand-clapping game, and um, it's one that I learned at... Um, it's one that I learned at an, an ORF level, but then I went and looked and found it on a bunch of blogs. Um, I found a bunch of um, explanations of like how it's actually used. Um, and so um, I wanted to share more about sort of that process of that because some people are like, I don't exactly know how you go through and teach it. So let me share a little bit of that. Uh, Maria, I would say you said I'm cutting in and out. Maybe try refreshing. I've had people say that before and usually refreshing the page helps. Hope so. Um, okay, so omochi, omochi o tsuki masho, omochi o tsuki masho, petan ko, petan ko, petan, petan, petan ko, konote, 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 ton, 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 ton. That's the version I've learned. There are other versions. Um, and so what I do with kids is like, I show them how there's a video online I found on YouTube of how mochi is made. Um, and mochi is this like traditional Japanese dessert that's made by pounding rice and you pound the rice and then you add flavors if you want and you add like a suki beans or you add other flavors and stuff into it. And then it's this like sort of gooey, sticky dessert that's sweet and, um, it's a, a super fun, um, dessert to have that you would find traditionally, like in Japan, there are lots of more modern versions, there's the traditional flavors, but the way that it's traditionally made is like pounding rice with like a huge hammer <laughs> and, um, and like super fast and like going in and then like between each hammer, there's like a person who puts their hand in and turns it or moves it or whatever. And so um, the it's sort of dangerous actually, but the video shows all that, explains it. And then what we learn in our story is the, like the poem that goes along with it because they say like we shout or we sing or we do whatever so that everyone's in the same rhythm so you don't accidentally get your hand crushed. Right. So, <laughs> so the poem, um, the words of the poem, um, they roughly translate to like we're pounding rice, we're making the sticky dessert. I don't remember the exact translations. I know I put a link to that on the links page um, weeks ago. So check out the links page but um the poem goes omochi well if i'm doing it with kids let me go back what i have them do the first time is just pat the steady beat while i say the poem so omochi o tsuki masho omochi o tsuki masho petan ko petan ko petan 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 ko konete 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 ton 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 
ton, 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 ton. We go like line by line. We learn the words. I say them, they repeat. I say them, they repeat. We go back and forth. We learn the whole poem. And then, you know, and after doing that, I just have them keep that steady beat, right? So maybe they're patting it, clapping it, maybe they're clapping it, whatever. Eventually, um, we have them clap it. We have them clap it like this. And I say one hand is steady. Pretend like you're the, you know, you've got a bowl with rice in it and you're going to be, you know, hitting it with the, your hammer, right? So you're, oh, let's pretend we're doing that, right? Okay. So, omochi, yotsuki masho, omochi. And so, like, maybe the first day, that's it. We've got the words. We've got a steady beat. Um, we've got that idea of, like, hands uh, one above the other, and we're clapping as you say it. Just clapping the steady beat, right? So... Um, what we do is then we, uh, the second time they come back, cause I, I sort of let that simmer. We, they come back. Um, I have another video that I found, which is like, uh, someone who makes mochi in Hawaii and uses like local Hawaiian flavors. It's a super cool video cause it shows like, here's the tradition of my, um, I think she said parents or grandparents came from Japan and they brought their food with them and then now we're making a Hawaiian version and so it's like all these cool Hawaiian flavors it shows how they make it again it shows how they like add the different flavors kids are like excited about the idea of it some kids at this point are like I went to the grocery store and I found mochi and it was so great anyway so um so we we talk about it again and then we go back to the poem and we do the same part. all they're doing is just the study right actually there's another part there's another part to this. And I might have, uh, you know, one kid come up and just do, you know, with me, just, they just do the steady beat and then I demo what the other part is. So that one kid is standing there doing just the steady beat and I do the other actions, which are, um, so clapping above and below the, like the hammer part. Like I'm right there next to them above and below them doing claps. And then petanko, petanko, petan, petan, petanko is me reaching in between the kid who's smashing their hands. Just reaching at just the right time so my hand doesn't get smashed. And then konete, 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 konete is my hand sort of sweeping in through in between their two smashing hands and and not getting hit again. And then ton, 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 ton is like clapping below in between their hands when their hands aren't smashing and then above it's a little tricky there are videos online that like slow it down show it uh, because I can't show it to you now if like there's not somebody else right? like you can't you can't really see it until you see sort of both parts which is really sort of tricky but that's why like I have one kid come up and they're doing the thing and then I do the part in between so everyone can see what's gonna happen and then we, we learn the different parts. So like that kid sits down, we learn the different parts. So like, omochi, we just learn the action. We learn the separate action without a kid smashing or anything like that. And we just learn, everyone learns that new action of like the, the mixer. I call that kid the mixer. There's the masher and the mixer. The masher is just the steady beat. The mixer is the kid whose like hands are going in and out and all around. And then when we're ready, we pair off. And at first I say, okay, the masher, you're just doing just this. Your hands are frozen in an open mash position. You are not smashing your hands together. Just, just like this, just leave them like this. And then the other kid, the mixer gets to like, while their hands are frozen, they get to like try to like in and out thing without, you know, knowing their hands are going to get smashed. So it like, it gives them a chance to like practice before there's actually like a, the chance of them getting their hands hit. I find that they are way more successful if you give them that time to like practice without worrying that their hands are going to get crushed right if it's just a practice and so then you know then we have the match in and we do we put it all together and then we switch jobs and so it's it's so fun like once you once they get the basics they're like i'm i'm here for it and they want to they want to do it again so like the next time they come back for class maybe they come back and they're like let's try it again and so what you can do to to vary things up so they stay excited is that you can like you know do a pair of a group of two and then maybe like have them rotate or have them change partners or do whatever you can have them switch it up so they get to be with different people um, you can either you can speed up or slow down the poem I mean there's there's so much you can do once the kids have it and they're they're ready for it so that they um, feel like it's fresh and exciting but are you know still into it if that makes sense okay I I don't know if that completely explains it, but like I've on the links page, I put 
the video for the original like how mochi is made video like mochi is changed it it's a video of like a student and a teacher moving their hands crushing clapping moving games so you could sort of see that and and use that but i wanted you to sort of hear like my process through of how i did it um, and I, I broke it up into like three or four days, right? It was like 10 minutes one day, 10 minutes another day, 10 minutes another day. So they're getting it slowly and they're like mastering it before I'm asking them to do like the smashing mushing part. Cause I think like students want to rush to that and teachers do too. We get real excited about that part, but it's easy to like, um, it's easy to want to rush that part when really you should spend more time on like the, the scaffolding into it. So they're successful when they get to that mashing part. Anyway, that's, that's my <laughs> quick rundown. Let's see, someone said, uh, I did Omochio sixth grade and they kept getting in trouble for doing it in their classroom. Made a mini version tapping pointer fingers together instead of clapping and they use a quiet high voice. It's hysterical. Laura, thank you for sharing that. I love that, <laughs> love that they like it. Um, I use it for fourth or fifth grade. I'm glad it's working also for sixth. I think it, it you wouldn't want to go much younger than fourth grade just because of like coordination. My fifth graders are better at it my fourth graders can do it, but my fifth graders are, are better at it. So it's it's definitely fun that like, you know, you could try it, you could bring it back. If you did it in fourth grade, bring it back in fifth grade and let them just use it at the beginning of the year as like a fun activity to start with. Um, great connections by, you know, sharing videos from around the world of how Moji's made and helping kids like sort of understand that connection. And I used it at the beginning of the year because like the Olympics were just happening or just finishing. And so like kids, you know, we could talk about like, oh, it's in Tokyo and here's, you know, this special dessert is from Japan. You can find it in the grocery store. Mochi's sort of popular right now. So um, I've seen it at Aldi and Costco and Hy-Vee and uh, Kroger and whatever, you, you know, your local place, you can have kids find it. Okay, speaking of food, um, so if you have more questions or ideas about Omochio, please put those in the comments. But speaking about food, um, another thing that I love to do is to use food as like an example to get kids excited and understand rhythm. And so with my younger grades, um, one of the things that we'll do is like, you know, when we're in this like iconic notation stage, um, we might take, um, let me see, where's my example? We might take icons and just like map out what foods make what sounds. It's so like if we have my whiteboard, um, I might say a word, I might say like apple. How many sounds is that? Apple. And what I've learned from classroom teachers is like <clears throat> when they're doing literacy stuff, if they're finding sounds and syllables, they'll go like apple, they'll clap it. And so that's something I've been trying to use as much as I can. So with my students like apple, I'll do like, I'll put up an iconic version, apple. Pole, two sounds, right? Um, let's see, but what if we didn't want just apple? What if we wanted apple pie? Apple is two sounds, and then what if I wanted pie? Uh, whoops, sorry, wrong side. I'm trying to do this like backwards, okay. Apple pie, apple pie. Ooh, cool, apple pie, and then we'll clap it, we'll read it, you know. Um, let's see, what if I wanted, um, Apple cider. Apple cider. Oh, cider. That's two sounds. Okay. I'm going to have to do cider. Apple cider. Great. What if I wanted, um, let's see. Um, what if I wanted um, blueberries? If I were going to break that up, it's really one word, but if we're gonna break it up, it would be sort of like this. Blueberries is a bad example because it really is one word, but it's two sets of sounds. Blueberries. What if I wanted, um, let's see, what's a better example than that? What if I wanted, um, I keep thinking of pies. Um, so pumpkin pie, cherry pie, rhubarb pie. That's all the same, it's all tot, or sorry, it's all toddy ta. So that's not a really good example. What if I wanted 
um, ooh, uh, sugar cookies, right? You could, you could do that. So a lot of times around this time of year, we'll think about foods, um, especially in the fall, we'll think about like apple picking and we'll use like fall foods or pumpkin or pumpkin patch or whatever to try and come up with different versions so that kids are starting to think about the sounds of foods, how those go together. And so then maybe, um, I would say like, okay, I want, um, I'm really hungry. And so I would like, um, let's see. I would like um, pear, pear, apple, pear. How could we do that? And you, so like maybe it, it starts out with me and with like things on the board like this. And then I give kids counters. I give them their own little icons or maybe you use like those erasers from the Target dollar spot or whatever. And you can come up with like, what did I say? Pear, pear, apple, pear, right? And you can... You can sort of, it's not really notation, it's just iconic, right? But you can use that. Um, and so then, you you know, we, we get into foods, we talk about those foods and how they have different sounds. And we just, try, we play around with that as much as we want with my younger grades. Um, and so it's using the foods to, um, using the foods to like give us the idea of rhythm and, and get some of those patterns together is really easy. And later on, when we're ready, you know, then we might take like, um, you know, once we've identified quarter notes and eighth notes, you know, like maybe already on it. And then it also has like an actual iconic notation, ver yeah, a standard notation version of the rhythm. So like radish is ta, ta, or let's see, uh, broccoli, ta di ta, or milk, ta, rest. Sorry, you can't really see that. It's really washed out. Um, let's see cranberries ta ta di you could take these foods and then with the food cards you can arrange them you can put them into patterns you can create little arrangements you can um, create little um, four measure patterns you can do I mean there's so many things you can take where you take these words or maybe you take like one you choose your favorite ta ta di pair you choose your favorite ta ta pair you choose your favorite uh, ta rest grouping right and you use that so then like you can like um, coffee, coffee, hot chocolate, milk, hot chocolate, hot chocolate, coffee, milk. You can like take those and put them together and make little patterns and little. Um, but again, food is a universal. So I love <laughs> using that with kids, especially around this time of year, because like kids are like, hey, it's fall. Let's talk about food. Um, then like for older grades or with subs, it's fun to then take that idea of the, uh, the food. And I like to use technology, um, especially with subs, uh, because kids like can click through real easy. We did a lot of this last year because of COVID where they had to only use technology, or had to use our iPads. And so kids are, um, much quicker at this. They're, they're easy, able to use this. So what I do is I have for some of these games that I've made, I have a little page with a QR code and all my kids have iPads. You can also use Chromebooks or whatever. Um, but I wanted to show you a couple of the games that I've been using with them. So let me see if I can switch this over. Okay. So cool. Oh yeah. My iPad. Let's see if that's going to show. Uh, nope. Okay. <laughs> Nope, let's see. Hello. iPad. Nope, not that one. Nope. Okay, well, <laughs> maybe my game's not going to work. I'll just show it to you this way. So, um, on my iPad, I thought I was going to be able to show it the fancy way. Nope. Okay, so I've got a couple games here. So, what I do is I leave a little QR code, and the kids can scan it with their, um, with their iPad, and then, you know, they get to play a little game where, like, they click it, and this is, you know, some people have asked me, they're like, I can't hear the sounds. These games don't have sounds because I, like I've talked with my reading teacher. I want them, um, like the reading specialist and I have talked about like they should be sounding out words and how do you make those connections of sounding out the words with the rhythms themselves. So instead of just like hearing it, I want them to like, you know, this is that audiation where you have to think it in your head. You have to come up with it on your own. So I want them to spend the time going through the words and sometimes the words will help them. So like apple cider it's like apple has its own set of sounds cider has its own set of sounds so they, they're going through and they're trying to find those sounds themselves but for some kids who are not strong readers there is a picture on every page so like give them an idea but like 
my I developed this with my my reading specialist because she was like, this is cool, and they can come up with the words and they can make that connection with um, the sounds, and then they you know the picture really helps those learners who are a little lower. So basically, what they go through on this game is like they go through, they find the rhythm that's correct, and they press the pie that works. And if they do, they get a hooray. If they don't, let me show you what happens. Peas. Let's pr press the wrong one. Oh no, the food fell off the table, the dog got it. Oh no, how terrible. So like they can, you know, try, they get a chance to try again. So this is pretty basic though, because it's just uh, quarter notes, eighth notes, and quarter rests. So I've, I've had folks say like, but what about like 16th notes? So there is a version um, that I came out with just like a month or two ago that now has like 16th notes. So like you could do the one item version where you have like one food at a time. So like this one, you have like pizza and you have to find out which one is the right one. This is where I have kids start, especially with 16th notes because some foods are a little trickier or some kids need a little help. So isolating just one food at a time is pretty helpful. So like pizza and they press it. It gives them a, a chime for like, you got it right, but it's not gonna say like pizza. It's not gonna say the word for them, but they do get a little sound if they get it right. Grapes. Let's see if they get it wrong. Okay, hold on. Uh, macaroni. Okay, I'm gonna choose the wrong one. Hello. Sad, but then they get to try again. Yay, okay. And then there's a little X, X up here if they want to go back to the main screen. So there's there's a whole version of just like one food words, then I've got two food words, so like making it slightly more complex, right? So now you've got, let's see, what food is it? Pear, pizza. So then this is where they have to come up with the correct combo of the two words together. Let's see what one more example of this is. Watermelon lime. Right, and then I've got four separate games of four foods in a row. So there's a fruit inspired one, veggie inspired, barbecue inspired, or junk food. Let's look at junk food, of course, because junk food. Okay, so then this has four separate words, four separate foods. So this one is frappuccino, donut, donut, pie. So then now we're into the same sort of process as before, but more complicated rhythms. So frappuccino, donut, donut, pie is takadini, tadi, tadi, ta. Ooh, good job, David. Okay, let's try one more. What have we got? Give me a food. Ice cream, gummy bear, hot dog, fries. Ooh, that's tricky. Ice cream, gummy bear, hot dog, fries. Dun, dun. Ooh, takadi, what? Oh my gosh. Anyway, so the you just like you learn the concept and then there's a the stage right where you can, like go through and try it and so that's what we get to do um, on the iPad they think it's so much more fun because it's an interactive game but really it's just like hey we're practicing it and we're reading <laughs> like it's just making those connections again they've done a simplified version this is just the next the next leap like the more complicated version um, and the kids get really excited about it so I usually use it in class first, and then I, I love to put it in the tub because I say to the, the homeroom teachers, like, please have your kids bring their iPads, and then all the sub has to do is project up um, this on the screen or take it around to kids. I print it out. It's a QR code. There's also um, a URL, so if you wanted to, like, send it to them through like schoolwork or uh, Google Classroom or Seesaw or whatever, you can do that too. Um, but you can do it either with a QR is easy if you have like an iPad or a phone or whatever. And that's another way to give it to them. But like it, they love that because it feels like a game, but then I know they're getting good content and sort of done it in class, then they can try it again and use it for a sub. And, and usually it's pretty successful for the sub and gives them like less to worry about. Um, and so it, as long as the tech works, it works as long as our internet is up or whatever. Um, so I always have a backup for that, but it's fun to be able to like take that idea and then put that into a sub to use that later. Okay, cool. And I've just and I talked about how I use, <clears throat> sorry, um, I use these food cups. I made them, I laminated them, I put a, ma a magnet on the back, and now they just pop up onto my whiteboard. Um, and they're really cute. So it's just form letters. So I've got A, and I've got C, and I've got B somewhere in here. Hello, B. 
No, C, 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 C. Okay, B, A, B, and C. So there are two parts of the song, The Pumpkin on the Vine. There's the A part, The Pumpkin on the Vine, The Pumpkin on the Vine. I picked the one that weighed a ton, that's the one that's mine. And there's the B section. Pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin on the vine. Pumpkin, pumpkin, that's the one that's mine. We learn this two parts separately. The A section, I have them pretend like they're holding a huge pumpkin and walk around with the pumpkin. The pumpkin on the vine, they're carrying it as they go. And then the B section is they stop and they go, pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin on the vine, like looking lovingly at their pumpkin. Do that for a couple reasons. So one, um, I want them to differentiate between A and B and having a locomotor versus a non-locomotor action makes that really easy, right? And I also do it because I want them to have a little bit of movement. And so um, I try and do that so they get a little bit of an option there and they have, um, oh, I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> Ooh, I hope I didn't. Blow out your ears on Facebook. <laughs> anyway, um, so I do that so there's like a locomotor and then a non locomotor, so they have very distinct different sections. So what I do, and then I, um, I let like my random stick picker app choose um, a kid's name, and the kid gets to come up and put it in any order they want. If they want to do BA, they can. If they want to do ABA, they can. If they want to do BBB, they can. If they want to do, you know, whatever. I have printed out. So the longest we're ever going to get as far as like a, a form is six parts. And the parts are all short anyway, so it's not like a huge deal. But I did on it. Um, in the, like that lesson, my principal came in and was like, we're doing an evaluation. So saw that. So what was fun was that like, then any random kid who got pulled by the it meant that like it over the course of a couple lessons would get a chance to do that. Um, it gave them a little bit more ownership. And then also then they go, had to, we had to sing and act out what they did. So in the lesson, it was like, you know, a kid would put up their thing and sing the, do the wrong part on purpose. And I would let kids catch me and be like, no, 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 what's next? You're singing A. And so it, it like helps them always check back to the form on the board. It helps them sort of track along and follow along so nor we are. So just A's and B's, but like an A section and a B section, but they can put it in different combinations. They can mix it up however they want. Um, and it, it's fun for them. It feels like a win for them. And also like, it's a super, super easy way to talk about and teach form at a young age. So, um, yeah, and it's a super easy song. Short, use it all throughout October and November because pumpkins. And these uh, pumpkin uh, form letters. Um, so if you're interested, they're there if you want them. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to go through because I, I don't think I saw any questions or comments that popped up. But I am going to follow that link. I'll see you soon about the little lady uh, puppet because you never have too many puppets. Um, if you have any questions about anything I've talked about today, I know this is sort of a catch-up day. But I want to make sure I like went back and talked because I've gotten some emails about like, can you tell us more about Note Neighborhood? Can you tell us more about Omochio? Can you tell us more about? So I wanted to make sure I got um, um, I got to that this week. If you have any questions about any of the resources or stuff, please check the links page or send me an email. I can send links to you too. Or if I didn't talk about something, I'm happy to do that. Um, I'm going to see many of you this week uh, through the Newfoundland Labrador and the Manitoba Music Conferences coming up. I'm so excited about that. Um, and if not there, I hope I'll see you next Monday for another Musical Mondays video. Bye.